Hello, good morning, happy new year. How is everyone today? Are you all back at work? I didn't even know it was a bank holiday yesterday. That's what happens when you work for yourself. I've lost complete track of time. So happy new year and I hope you've had an amazing Christmas um, and new years. Well, to start with, we're only on the 4th of January, aren't we? And, and I hope things are really looking positive and you're thinking about how you're going to take your weight loss forward this year, what changes you're going to make. And so I thought, it would be good to talk about New Year's resolutions. So I'm just gonna press the record button because I've forgotten. So today I'm gonna to talk about New Year's resolutions and are they good or are they bad? Are they important to set? Now I'm a non-resolution person. I don't set New Year's resolutions because I used to in the past and I'd follow them for maybe a couple of weeks or maybe for a month. And then I'd find it so overwhelming with all the different changes that I had to make. I'd, I'd stop following them. So I'd, I'm, not, I'm not a New Year's resolution setter, but I know many people are. And I think what I want to talk to you all about today is that I know many of you have probably set resolutions for yourself. And what I want you to do is be really clear on your reasons for the resolutions that you're setting, but also not just the resolutions that you're setting, is how many you set in, because most of you will be set, have this all or nothing mindset. So you're doing something 100% and that's why you set these resolutions or you're not doing it at all. And I call it, it's only the 4th of January, but I, I call it the F it mode, the fuck it mode. OK, it's when you're sabotaging everything that you've set up for yourself and you're probably, you know, it's like the gym. I always know when I go back to the gym in the new year, although I've literally only had a few days off when the gym was closed and they wouldn't let me in, um, that I know it's going to be super busy and it's going to be really difficult to get booked in for classes. But I know I don't never worry about it because I know by the time it's the first of February, I won't see all these new people again. And I. And I don't want you guys to be in that, in that, that mindset of it's too much for me. I'm going to give it up. I can't be bothered. I always feel like I'm failing. OK, so this is why I'm in here to have a quick chat. I've made some notes. I need to bring them up before I waffle on. You know what I'm like. So, you know, we really need to think about. What are these resolutions that you've set? And I know a lot of them are going to be around weight loss, especially if you're struggling. So why do people fail with resolutions or why do they give up on them after a month or so? Because sometimes there's too many goals. You know, you'll say, right, from not going to the gym at all, you'll be like, I'm going to the gym seven days a week or five days a week and I'm going to do an hour to two hours every day. Yeah, I hope that's not going to be um, somebody's resolution. It probably is, right? And so you're setting too many goals or the goals are too overwhelming. Um, and so, you know, you're setting yourself up to fail. They're fantastic. It's a fantastic goal going to the gym, you know, five to seven days a week. But is it realistic? Is it manageable? Now, if especially if you're a mom, you've got children, you're working full time, you know, you're the main carer for the children. Let's say if you're a single mom like me, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's you're going to be make it all a bit of a priority. Then the guilt's going to set in about the kids or the house falling to bits or work or whatever it is. And you're going to be like, oh, I can't do this because you've got this all or nothing mindset. You're either going to be doing it or you're not. So we need to think about the, you know, are you setting too many goals and are they realistic? Sometimes it's because you're, you don't have the support. So let's say if you did want to go to the gym, let's say five days a week, you've said to yourself, I want to go to the gym five days a week and I want to do a good hour. I know you guys will probably be thinking I need to get in there and do at least two hours. You don't. 45 minutes to an hour is enough. After that, your body goes into stress mode and it helps you store fat. So 45 minutes is more than enough. So if you do want to go to the gym, 
let's say that's your resolution five days a week, then you've got to think about, right, what support do I need to make sure that I do go to the gym? Do I need a, an accountability buddy? Do I need a friend to go to the gym with so that we remind each other that we need to go? It's company, you know, we don't want to let the other one down, so you go. Do you need someone to look after the children? Will you need more help around the home? Do you need a cleaner? Because that's going to save you a lot of time every week. You know, you've got to think about these things. Don't just think, I want to get to the gym. Right, how are you going to do it? Remember, it's always the why and the how. The why you want to go to the gym is because you want to lose weight and you want to create a healthy lifestyle. Great, fantastic. Then we've got to think about how. How are we going to do it? And also the what. What are the benefits of doing what you're doing? Yes, obviously, weight loss. But how is it going to affect your family? Okay, you know, the guilt is going to set in. Oh, I can't do it. It's painful. It will be painful initially, but you've got to keep pushing yourself beyond that boundary. So, you know, you've got to be really honest with yourself. Is this achievable? Is it realistic? And if it isn't, tone it down and there's nothing wrong you know you might just say I would say to somebody when I'm doing my one-to-one -one, um, working I always try and find out what somebody's why is why do you want to do that when you've not done it for the last two years why well because I feel I should is usually the answer I feel I need to and right that's great because you know we do need to move more we need to be more active however if you don't really enjoy the gym, but you do want to be active, why go to the gym? There are plenty of different things that you can do to be more active. So you could join a dance class. You know, you could go and do your salsa. You, can, you could join, if you're into Indian dancing, do Indian dancing. You know, whatever style of thing that you want to do. You could just go for a walk with a friend. I know in the tribe community, one of the girls has said that, you know, she's going to try and do a marathon. Fantastic. You know, she hasn't done it for a while. I said, well, look, if you struggle, why don't you consider doing this? One, just a, a 10 minute walk every day. Do it with a girlfriend. Do it with a different girlfriend every day. You know, so try and make it realistic because the reason why New Year's resolutions don't last for long is because it's too over overwhelming. It's too different from what you do. And it's a shock to the system. And so your motivation runs out. So then you think you haven't got any willpower. Weight loss and leading a healthier lifestyle isn't about willpower. It's about making small changes that are achievable and realistic. I would recommend that you have one goal, just one. And you might want to set yourself a weekly goal, okay? And these are the, this, this is some of the stuff that I'm going to be doing in the tribe community. So I might say to them all in, in the tribe community that, okay, let's just start off with just making sure that you eat off a side plate at your lunch and your dinner, okay? And once you've completed that and you're familiar with that, and that might take a week, it might take two weeks, you might already be doing that already, then that's great. Then the next thing to move on to is, is my meal balanced? Right, and if it isn't, let's correct the balance to make sure you've got the right amount of macros, the right amount of protein, veg, and yes, carbs. You do need carbs. If you cut them out, you're gonna crave them, okay? We can cut down on carbs, but we don't want to come cut them out completely. So once you get into the habit of doing that at your three meals a day, or at least two, then you can move on to the next little task or goal. And it could be that, right, I'm gonna really look at my textures and make sure they're a lot firmer and denser. Because if they're firmer and denser, I know that the that's gonna aid that fullness signal. And when it aids the fullness signal, that means I might even leave food on my plate because it's gonna to be too much for me. And that could be your next little goal. So maybe make a list of the things that you want to work on and exercise might be in it, you know, getting, getting things like your, your, your plate size under control, your balance of your meals, your food textures, 
eating mindfully, that might be another one that you might say to yourself, right, I'm going to make sure when I'm at home, I eat mindfully. I don't have my TV on. I, I'm sitting at the table. I'm having a conversation with my children, my partner, etc. I want to make sure I spend 20 minutes on a meal. I mean, that might be another goal in itself that you spend 15 to 20 minutes on a meal. So by layering these little changes were compounding the effect. And what that does is it leads to success. Whereas if you go in, wham, bam, thank you, man, and try and do 101 things all at once, you're going to feel like you're failing. You are going to feel overwhelmed and you're going to say, I can't be doing with this. I can't do this. It's always too much for me. Remember, a lot of the things that you are going to be trying to manage and cope with is all about mindset. OK, and I know I talk about this a lot and that's because I know and it is it's the, you know, trying to get your diet under control. OK, managing the type of foods that you eat, being active, etc., is the main aspect of what we need to focus on when it comes to weight loss. OK, right. I get that. You know, we need to look at nutrition, the balance, etc., the coaching element is trying to really, really focus on the mindset so you can start to become the person that you want to become. OK, but without the therapy aspect, which is the back end of understanding why you do all these things, why you sabotage your weight loss, why you overeat, why you emotionally eat, why you're a pleaser, why you, you get upset by your surroundings, by the people that are around you, why you feel that you're failing all the time, the why, 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 the why is what I need to help you to work on, the why and the coaching element of how to get you there. The bit in the middle is the bit that you guys all know. You get that from your provider, you know, from whoever you have surgery with, from me, okay, wherever you get that information from, Google, this group, but the two most important key elements to your weight loss for sustainable weight loss so you don't have that regain is the coaching element focusing on mindset so you become the person that you want to become. But more importantly, the back end, and I don't mean it in a bad way, the back end is the therapy aspect of going back to your childhood habits, your social influences. Why are you the way that you are? Okay. And that's really, really important when it comes to weight loss surgery, because in the first few months, six, three months, six months, six weeks, two weeks, first year, you'll have a honeymoon period and it will just feel like you've got things under control. When that honeymoon period sort of ends, then all of a sudden normality sets back in and your old habits might start to creep back in if you haven't worked on them. And the other thing is you've got to be kind to yourself. I think weight loss, especially weight loss surgery patients are very unkind to themselves. They're so hard on themselves when things don't go in the right direction. But let me tell you, try and be kind to yourself. You know, when things go wrong, I really do believe it's the universe trying to teach you a lesson. So when you say you're going to the gym five days a week or seven days a week, the universe, if you can't manage or keep up with it or it's too much, it's a message to say, hang on, let me just stop there. Why can't I do it? Well, it's probably because I've taken on too much, right? So let's be kind. Maybe let's start gently. Maybe we'll just have twice a week or even once a week. Or maybe the gym isn't for you. Something else is going to be better for you. So I really want you to think about your New Year's resolutions, what goals you've set for yourself, and maybe just have one goal a week okay or a fortnight or you may want to work on one thing a month you decide but remember one change at a time leads to many changes over 365 days so you know you might even say right I know weekends are my time but maybe I'm a bit more disruptive with my diet and that's when things get out of control it might be that you just focus on things at the weekend because you're more structured during the week but look, these, everything that I'm talking to about you today is all part of the eight-week program. We first focus on getting you to work with your surgery correctly because you've got a tool there. And if we don't get you to work with it correctly, you know, nothing else is really, you know, you're going to be struggling all the way. And then 
from week four onwards, we're talking, well, week three onwards, we're, we're, week three and four, we're starting to talk more about mindset. And in fact, there's bits of mindset in, in each week, but then we really go into the mindset in helping you create that healthy relationship with food, why you do what you do. So we talk about dieting, the dieting cycle, craving. So a lot of that, the all or nothing mindset. We talk about how you're going to create balance, but then we also talk about how you create the right mindset. And that's what's going to make, make you become so much more successful with your weight loss. And look, at times I know my ladies are going to feel, and gents who I work with, feel at times that they're failing. And it's because they want to do more than I tell them. And so I always have to come in and say, come on, let's just take a step back. Let's just focus on these two things. So, you know, nothing's ever easy in, in life when it comes to weight loss, but you've got a fantastic tool that we can get you to work with. The, the, the bit that we really need to work on after that is mindset, okay? And if not before, and I really do find people that work on their mindset before they have surgery, because I'm able to manage their expectations, do so much better. But look, we can still do it afterwards as well. So, right, that's enough about New Year's resolutions. So keep them simple, keep them short, maybe just set one, make it realistic, make it so that it's manageable. And let me know how you get on and let me know what your New Year's resolutions are in the comments. That'd be really interesting to see. But look, if you still want to sign up to the eight-week program, you can do that. We're going to be kicking off soon with the, the live Q&A sessions, which will be every two months. And then there's lots of things going on in the tribe community. So there's a meal plan that will be delivered every two weeks in the group. So you get recipes, you get the nutritional breakdown. Um, what else? You get me coming in every, every day, just checking on questions. If anyone's got any queries, um, two live Q&A sessions where you can ask me about anything and you've got the eight week program access to that for 12 months. So have a look at that because it's the entry level of my support. Um, my clients have, um, my current clients are getting one to one support, but also they're going to be in the tribe community. So have a look at that and then I'll leave the link for the, the program in the comments below. But look, I'm going to go. I've been babbling on more than enough as usual. But if you've got any queries or anything that you'd like me to talk about, please post your questions. Maybe into this post so I can keep an eye on it and I will try and help you as much as I can. But if you are looking for support and accountability buddy, then please do come and join the tribe community. Um, and it is a paid for community because you've got to pay for the eight week program and then 12 months of support. But it's it's going to be great. So get yourselves in there. Right. I'm going to love you and leave you. Take care. Happy New Year. And I'm sure I'll see you again next week. Bye.